The old adage is, is the transfer portal giveth and the transfer portal taketh. Well, right now it's taking from the BYU basketball program, making it all the more imperative the BYU administration hurry up and hire Mark Pope's replacement. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto is your team every day, and as such, we are your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU. And today's show is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and, more importantly, for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. All right, let's dive right in on today's show and BYU continues to try and uh, figure out what they're going to do next after Mark Pope's departure uh, from BYU. He was introduced formally yesterday at a press conference at Rupp Arena down there in Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, any of you who saw the scenes uh, from Rupp Arena, holy smokes, big blue nation showed up in force uh, for coach Pope. Now, uh, Obviously, the the writing is as re- yet to be written with regards to what his uh, run at Kentucky is going to look like. But apparently, the fan base is all in on this. Now, some people were saying uh, were saying that uh, there was some kind of backlash to fans saying, "Well, let's show up and force for Mark Mark Pope and really stick it to Coach Cal." Speaking of John Calipari, uh, who left Kentucky for Arkansas, but hey, regardless. Really cool scenes down there at Rupp Arena. But that leaves BYU in a little bit of a bind right now. The BYU basketball program has to find a new head man for that position. Well, all of you watching this podcast are probably wondering, well, Jake, what have you heard? What do you got for us? Let's dive right into this. I'll say this right off the top. Chris Burgess is the favorite for this job. And that is me saying this. I'm recording this Sunday evening. Most of you watch this either Monday morning or or whenever you watch it. And I truly appreciate all the feedback, by the way. Uh, I got to give credit to you and Kentucky fans. Last Friday, our, our our episode reacting to Mark Pope's hire at Kentucky, the most watched and listened to podcast, single podcast in the five and a half plus year history of this podcast. So thank you for the feedback. Thank you for the support. It really means the world to me. By the way, it pushes over 5,000 YouTube subscribers. So uh, really cool things coming off of that. But regardless, the BYU basketball program, the more important thing is they got to find a new head coach. What I have been told is that Chris Burgess is the favorite for that job, and he's been the favorite, I, I felt like, since the get-go. As soon as Mark Pope uh, told BYU administration he was leaving, I think that BYU turned and said, okay, who do we got on the list? Well, we went down the list last week. You had Chris Burgess, Barrett Peary. Mark Madsen took himself out of the running very quickly after uh, the announcement officially came from Kentucky. I think it was like 15, 20 minutes later, he puts out a statement saying, I'm very happy at Cal. We want to build something here, blah, 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 blah. And some people said, well, it's only a matter of money. He's trying to, he's trying to get a raise. Well, if that was the case, we would have heard more about Mark Madsen negotiating a new contract with Cal and or negotiating with BYU. I believe in, based on the conversations I had with multiple folks in the Bay Area, uh, Mark Madsen's sticking around at Cal for the time being. So that turns the attention then to Chris Burgess. Now, I, I understand there's some consternation around Chris Burgess. Let me acknowledge that real quick. If you are holding uh, on to some kind of ire over a comment about letting down 9 million Mormons when he ultimately didn't commit to BYU 30 years ago, get over it. Second, if you have a problem with him being a quote-unquote ute coming to BYU and uh, claiming, as some of you have been (laughs) messaging me, and I I can understand the fear of this, but what's to say if he doesn't get hired at BYU in the second that Craig Smith gets fired and or leaves Utah, why wouldn't Chris run right back to Utah? That is a real possibility. The reason why you make this hire if you ultimately settle on Chris Burgess is, A, Chris Burgess deserves this opportunity. I will say that because this is a man who uh, played at Duke, played at Utah, then wanted to have a decade-plus-long uh, uh, professional career overseas, came back to the States, wanted to get into coaching, and got his first uh, full-time assistant coaching job at the junior college level. He has methodically worked his way up the ranks, and he is now the associate head coach at Utah. Well, the next step is to take over a Power 5 program. Well, that's what BYU is, and I believe that it is the time for Chris Burgess to step into the limelight and get his opportunity to run a program. Other thing. Uh, A couple of you are concerned about him running back to Utah. Okay, great. But guess what? 
What could he bring from Utah is the bigger question in the interim. Could he bring some of Utah's guys on the roster that may be interested in playing for him versus playing for Craig Smith or the Utes? That is a possibility. The other thing is he's not that far removed from uh, recruiting for BYU, so he already has established relationships with guys like Dallin Hall. Richie Saunders. He can go out, and we'll talk about those guys in terms of the transfer portal entrance here in just a moment. He can go out and uh, try and put this roster back together, bring the guys back to Provo, and supplement it with a body or two that he believes can take this roster to, to the next level. That is why I believe Chris Burgess is the perfect man for this job. A, he can keep the roster intact as much as humanly possible, and B, I believe it is his time to shine. He has been working methodically. Trust me, I, I know his background. I know what he wants to do as a basketball coach. Not very many uh, guys out there, I'm speaking just generally, work their way up through the ranks like Chris Burgess has. And I believe that it is his time to get a shot at this. And to those of you who say that he should go uh, do it at the Big Sky or the Mountain West level before doing it at the Big 12 level, Great, but I just don't see a more ready-made replacement right now in terms of the combination of factors at play here than Chris Burgess. Some of you will yell, uh, Barrett Peary's got got a head coaching experience. Well, his run at Portland State was very middling. It was four years, and I think it was around 500 overall. Nick Robinson, okay, he's been a head coach. Guess what? His run at Southern Utah yielded a grand total of seven wins on average per season. He was there in Cedar City. None of the other candidates in my mind have the same level of, oh, you know, same level, same combination of, I think, strengths that would benefit the BYU basketball program in this instance. Down the road, different story. I, Quincy Lewis, I've been told, is in the mix here, and Quincy Lewis knows his X's and O's. There's no arguing that. He is the, isn't he the state uh, record holder for uh, championships in boys' basketball in the state of Utah's history. Just won one uh, this past year with Lehigh. Great, but guess what? I'd have a hard time stomaching BYU trotting out Quincy Lewis and saying, we've hired former 6A uh, high school basketball coach Quincy Lewis as our new head coach in the Big 12. You want to try and uh, put lipstick on that pig? Go right on ahead, and that's nothing against Quincy Lewis. I'm just saying that it'd be a very hard sell to take a guy from the high school ranks, pluck him out of there, and establish him as a Power 5 basketball head coach. So I say that all of that to say this. Chris Burgess is the favorite. Barrett Peary is involved as well, as well as Quincy Lewis. I've been told that all three of them should or will be having interviews with BYU. The other thing is it is absolutely imperative that BYU gets this higher right and gets it done in a timely fashion. Well, what is a timely fashion? Today, speaking of Monday, would be a great time to announce it because we give BYU a chance to put this roster back together. What I was told over the weekend and talking with folks is that midweek is how it was going in most people's minds of when BYU might announce it. And that, by the way, is lightning speed compared to some of what BYU's done in the past. Remember when Kalani Satake was hired at BYU? That took like a month, even though BYU knew Kalani Kalani Satake was the guy all along. There were, ge there were general authorities who essentially threw a curveball at BYU and said, hey, we want you to interview that Ken Niamatololo guy from Navy. Ken came out as a dog and pony show, uh, arrived at the airport, met with uh, uh, team uh, officials, not team officials, uh, school officials, and then went right back to Navy, and BYU then made the hire of Kalani Satake. So barring any other hijinks with regards to a curveball being thrown BYU administration's way, I am hoping, fingers crossed, this hire gets announced by midweek this week. But I'd love nothing more than for this podcast to be completely out of date by the time I literally post it, it feels like. And I'll post it overnight. But regardless, you get what I'm talking about. I'd love for it to be outdated on Monday, and we'll see how everything goes. But it is my belief, based on the conversations I've had as recently as this evening, Sunday evening, that Chris Burgess is in the lead to take over at BYU. And I think, just once again, I think that is the best a hire, all things considered right now, that BYU can do. All right, coming up here in just a minute, three members of the BYU basketball program have entered the transfer portal already from a roster that is considered to be very, very strong and could be one that is an upper echelon Big 12 team next year if it holds together. What will it take for that to hold together, and why are these three in the portal right now? We'll dig into that next right here on Locked on Cougars. 
Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role, my friends. Uh, that's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs as a tool to find, right, find you the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And LinkedIn is not just another job board out there. It is helping you find hire professionals you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So you're not looking on LinkedIn. You're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours of their job posting. Hire professionals like a professional and do it on LinkedIn. They know that small businesses are wearing many hats and might not have the adequate time or resources to hire. That's why it'll make it as simple as possible for you guys to fire, find the right people for your job. 2.5 million small businesses you link, use LinkedIn for their hiring needs. I want you guys to give it a shot as well. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I want to remind you guys that this week it's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live, April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and also the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Uh, find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise in the upcoming NFL Draft. Live reactions from local college football experts, even the fantasy football angle as well. That's the Locked On NFL mock draft special April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Mountain time, streaming live on the Locked On Sports Today 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. So check it out, my friends. I uh, will see if Kingsley Suomatia makes an appearance uh, in that mock draft. Just a little bit of a tease ahead to that. All right, let's talk about the transfer portal. Now, I said it at the outset of today's show, the transfer portal giveth, the transfer portal taketh. Well, right now it's taking from BYU. If you did not see it over the weekend, three current members of the BYU basketball program, beyond what we already knew, Marcus Adams, have entered the transfer portal. Those are, in order of their entrance, Dallin Hall, Ali Khalifa, and as of Sunday afternoon, Richie Saunders. Now, all three of them, I believe, are critical key pieces to a BYU roster that has been rated as high as 10th in the way too early top 25 polls. That comes from USA Today. There are about six or seven other ones out there that had BYU anywhere from felt like 23 or 24, all the way up to number 10 and anywhere in between. This is a very strong roster that BYU had together, even uh, expecting the departures of Jackson Robinson and Spencer Johnson from it. There was some thought if BYU could supplement that, bring back guys like Colin Chandler, et cetera. And by the way, that's another tip, uh, a feather in the cap of a guy like Chris Burgess. He was a big part of recruiting Colin Chandler to BYU. So if you want to keep him in the fold, that's probably another, uh, I guess, uh, notch in the belt to help out. Uh, Chris Burgess get this job, but back to the point at hand. All three of these young men, Ali Khalifa, Dallin Hall, and Richie Saunders, I think leave sizable holes on this BYU roster. You need to have them back if at all possible. And I will also say this right up front. I do not blame any of the three for entering the NCAA transfer portal. It's actually in their best interest to go out there and see what their options are on the quote-unquote free market when it comes to NIL, uh, what schools may be interested in adding them to their rosters, and the like. I can completely understand why they would do this. Richie Saunders said it's because of the head coaching uncertainty that I'm entering the portal to look at my options. I would believe that if BYU could get like uh, get a guy like Chris Burgess installed very quickly, I would imagine that Richie Saunders may say, you know what? I like Chris Burgess. I'll come back and play for him. But you got to get the head coach hired. Until that hire occurs, there are going to be guys like Dallin Hall, like Ali Khalifa, and like Richie Saunders who are going to look around at their options. And by the way, all three of them at the level they played at this year for BYU in the Big 12 Conference, you can guarantee there are going to be some sizable NIL opportunities coming their way. And I say opportunities because we're not supposed to be talking about contracts, but let's be real. They are contracts. We're, we're talking about a professional sport, everybody. It's just, it's, it is what it is in this day and age. Could all three of them come back to BYU? Yes. Could all three of them leave still, even if BYU hires a guy like Chris Burgess? Absolutely, yes. But I think the bigger point is, is the BYU, which is kind of the tip of the iceberg right now. What's to stop Fuseni Traore from entering the transfer portal? What's to stop Noah Waterman from entering the, entering the transfer portal? And anybody else on this roster uh, to go out there and see what's out there uh, in terms of their prospects. They may like what they see. They may not and come hustling back to BYU. That's within their rights as student athletes and with the way the rules are set up for transfer portal right now. So 
understand why all three of them are doing it. It's not because they're not loyal to BYU basketball. I, I cannot fathom why we're talking about loyalty in this day and age, folks. We have professional sports. It is every man for himself. You sign contracts that lock you in with the uh, franchise. And oh, by the way, that franchise can trade you the, uh, the next year if they want to. It's it, it, it it's literally become a professional sport. So if you're going to preach loyalty to these young men, and trust me, it's preached to these guys all the time. Well, at the same time, understand that when their whole world and world, I use it in quotes, but when they see their head coach leave for a new job at Kentucky, it's something they'd uh, put together as a team. They're a little bit lost and they're trying to find what's next for them. So do not fault them for entering the transfer portal. Actually, frankly, encourage them and be a supportive of them doing that because that may have leave a better taste in their mouth with regards to potentially returning to BYU. We have learned from on3.com that Ali Khalif is down to three finalists. What it is, it's Louisville, it's Kentucky, and it's a return to BYU. So he is expected to visit Louisville this week and uh, meet with their new head coach uh, down there in Louisville. He'll probably make the on the same weekend. I would manage, imagine a trip over to see his old coach and Mark Pope at Kentucky and see what the Wildcats have to offer him. And then uh, hopefully at that point, BYU's got a new head coach in place and he can come back, meet with Chris Burgess, whoever it might be as the head coach, and then establish what he's looking for and make the best decision for himself. I do not know what the current circumstances are with regards to Dallin Hall and or Richie Saunders, but I would imagine it's a very similar process. They will probably take some visits, look around at what's out there, and then ultimately see what BYU does and then go from there. Frankly, I also had this. I would encourage every BYU, every player on BYU's roster right now to go in the portal and see what their options are. I know that probably is going to make me persona non grata to even utter that phrase, but let's be real. With the uncertainty right now, with everything with the BYU basketball program, why wouldn't you look out for number one and look out for yourself in your best interest right now? That's what's got to be, I think, uh, priority one for these young men. And like I said, I'm probably going to get some uh, pretty uh, pointed comments in return for saying that. But in this day and age, why wouldn't you? It's kind of the same adage. Like, uh, what's going on with Jackson Robinson right now? Jackson Robinson is, I'm expecting him to announce he's going in the transfer portal and he's going to enter the NBA draft, but not hire an agent right away. He will go through some workouts with teams, get a, get some feedback from NBA team officials, scouts, uh, front office personnel, coaches, and the like, and then decide, okay, do I want to go back to college, work on some of these things they pointed out to me, or do I want to just take my uh, shot on myself and go into the NBA draft and let bygones be bygones? It's the same way with the transfer portal. Why wouldn't you in this circumstance go in the portal and look at what is in your best interest right now? Maybe you go out there, you find the perfect situation for yourself. And oh, by the way, you secure a bag monetarily regarding NIL. I can't fault any of these young men for considering any and all options at this point. And we'll see where it ultimately lands. But it is my sincere hope, while I say they should all enter the portal, it's my sincere hope that all of them go out there, see what's out there in the bigger, broader world with regards to NIL and the transfer portal. Then BYU hires out like Chris Burgess. He comes in and says, guys, let's run it back. You've got a roster here that is top 25 caliber. Let's go make a run in the Big 12 and make a bigger splash than we did this year. Let's actually go win in the postseason. Let's go do all the things you want to do and do it here at BYU. You're already established here, your household names. And oh, by the way, BYU will take care of you guys NIL-wise to the tune of XYZ dollar amounts. That's the dream scenario, it feels like for me. And we'll see if it ultimately plays out that way. But I think that there is a very, very real a possibility for BYU to uh, keep this thing together, but it goes back to what I said a little bit earlier on. You got to get that head coach hired and you got to get them hired as soon as humanly possible. All right, we'll finish out today's edition of the podcast, talking about some of the other news from over the weekend. Uh, you want to talk about a basketball program that's doing work in the portal? Well, let's look at the women's basketball program for BYU, adding two new members to Amber Whiting's roster. We'll talk about all that as well as some a reaction to BYU baseball, BYU softball, and also BYU volleyball. We'll get to all that next as you roll on right here on Locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball is in full swing, my friends, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game and anything in between those three and also football. No matter what you're into, right now, new customers, you get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Think about that. You've got zero to lose when it comes to cashing in on this offer from our friends at, bat, uh, at FanDuel. Uh, bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam ducks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. That's the best part about it. You don't have to go 
go on a computer uh, and log these bets. You can do it from the comfort of your home right there on the device we seem to have around us all day, every day on our phones. So what are you waiting for, my friends? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Once again, cash in $150 in bonus bets guaranteed win or lose, my friends. Start today at FanDuel.com slash locked on. It's all courtesy of FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I want to remind you guys, by the way, about our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. Those of you who are in our Locked On Cougars Insiders groups are probably sitting here. Jake, tell me something I don't already know. I was sending out text messages periodically throughout the weekend. Every time I would hear an update and I was able to vet it, I was sending it out to our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. And the best part about it, it comes to your phone in the fo- in the form of a text message. Think about that. We're all always checking our text messages and you can get those updates instantaneously. Uh, join Locked On Cougars, our Insider Group. Uh, click on the show notes, uh, the link in the show notes and join us today. It's a 14-day free trial, uh, $5 a month afterwards. It supports the show and also gets you guys uh, the inside intel you won't find anywhere else as well. All right. Uh, let's talk about some of the news out there in BYU uh, sports. Congratulations to Amber Whiting. She has added two new members to her basketball program via the transfer portal. Santa Clara transfer Maria Hudgens has committed to BYU out of Santa Clara. She averaged 7.7 points and shot 36.4% from three this past season. Uh, she was actually a, a, a all WCC freshman BYU's final season in the West Coast Conference uh, that year. She's a six foot guard. And then Hattie Ogden also is committed to BYU. She's a six foot two forward slash guard. Uh, who uh, comes to BYU by way of the University of Buffalo, uh, all the way out there in the MAC. Uh, she averaged 7.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, 1.3 assists, and 1.3 steals for the Bulls this past year. Uh, she is a native of McGrath, Alberta, Canada, and she is related, uh, cousin uh, with BYU football signee Enoch Watson. She's also the niece of the uh, uh, Wagner brothers, both Aaron and Jaden, former BYU linebackers. Uh, she has got a ton of connections to this university, and it's kind of fun to have have her quote unquote home playing for BYU. I saw a bunch of posts from her family, uh, Enoch Watson, Jaden, and also Aaron Wagner over the weekend celebrating the fact that uh, Hattie is now playing for BYU. So uh, really cool to see this and congratulations to both of them. And by the way, uh, it's actually kind of fun to have both of them in the program because they're going to have time to grow with BYU as well. Both of them have two years of eligibility remaining. So they're not coming in as one year uh, transfers. They're going to have some time to work with uh, Coach Whiting and build something up here. And that's always, I think, the the benefit of guys in the portal like that. So congratulations to them. Also a former BYU football players landed in a new spot and that is former BYU quarterback slash running back Sol J. Mayava Peters. He is headed to the New Mexico Lobos uh, to link up with Bronco Mendenhall down there in Albuquerque. Well, let's be real. The last time he played in New Mexico, had a pretty good run. He was the New Mexico Bowl offensive MVP, uh, announced that uh, a decision to commit to UNM yesterday. So congratulations to Sol J. Uh, we'll see what position he plays for Bronco Mendenhall. He had made a pretty successful transition to running back last spring before uh, some great issues uh, forced him off the field and essentially forced him out of the BYU football program. But uh, it sounds like he is back on his feet uh, for proverbially and looking forward to seeing what he can do with the Lobos down there in New Mexico. And congratulations to Sol J. I'm finding a new spot to play ball. All right, final notes from today's show I got for you guys is BYU baseball. They're now 14 and 18 on the season, 6 and 12 in the conference. Had an up and down weekend uh, against Baylor, opened it up with a 9 2 loss, uh, then uh, battled 8 5 in extra innings on Friday night, but then they received the like the best for last. I know it was a sweep, it was a three game uh, series loss for BYU, but they were down 18 to five in the sixth inning and put on an absolutely furious rally. 12 runs end up losing just uh, by the thinnest of margins, 18 to 17 in the series finale on Saturday afternoon. So a tough loss uh, for BYU. They had originally scheduled to play Utah tech tonight, but that game has been moved to tomorrow due to inclement weather expected at Miller park. Uh, so the next game for them will be at six o'clock tomorrow evening uh, when they take on Utah, Utah tech ahead of hosting a three game series against Oklahoma this weekend. Uh, But the big win of the weekend on the diamond goes to the BYU softball program. Now, I was lamenting last week BYU being on a losing streak going into a matchup, a three-game series against number two-ranked Oklahoma. Well, uh, BYU might have heard what I said and took a little bit of fire out of it. Now, they did lose the series. ended up being a 2-1 series in favor of number two-ranked Oklahoma. You heard me say that. Uh, They only won two games. BYU got a massive, massive upset in the middle game 
of this series. So congratulations to Gordon Eakin's squad. They won that one 9-4. They opened up the series uh, losing 8 nothing in five innings, uh, won the middle game 9-4, to and then ended up losing the series finale uh, seven to three, but the fact that BYU took a game off Oklahoma and it's the first of it, if I'm not mistaken, their first big 12 home loss in like, I don't know, years. <laughs> crazy but congratulations to BYU softball that's something to build on there uh they are now headed uh no, excuse me, not headed they're actually staying at home uh tomorrow they'll be hosting Idaho State at Gail Miller Field W at six o'clock mountain time as well and then they'll be back at home this weekend against Iowa State uh if you want to get out to Miller uh Park to watch uh, both uh, BYU softball and baseball it's a dual uh home uh weekend for both of them and the final note I got for you guys on today's show uh, is congratulations to BYU men's volleyball they are now the number three seed in the MP PSF tournament coming up this weekend. Uh, they will be ho- they will be hosted uh, by USC down there at the Galen Center. That begins Wednesday, April seventeenth, runs through Saturday, April twentieth. Uh, championship game is scheduled for Saturday night at seven o'clock Mountain Time. If you're wondering about that, uh, they will be taking on the host USC as the sixth seed. Uh, speaking of BYU on Wednesday at seven uh, at five thirty Pacific time, that's six thirty Mountain Time. Uh, you can get tickets by going to the USC Athletics website. But best of luck to the BYU men's uh, volleyball program. Uh, if they can win this, they would clinch the automatic uh, berth into the NCAA championship. So we'll see how it all shakes out. But uh, cool to see the men's volleyball program having a pretty successful year and now getting an opportunity in the postseason to see if they can. Uh, uh, push further into the postseason. Uh, it's been 20 years since BYU men's volleyball has won a national championship. I remember how big it was in 2004 when they won what ultimately is their last national championship. They have made three or four title game appearances since then, have lost all of them. Uh, it'd be good to see BYU uh, volleyball back on top of the NCAA at some point in the relatively near future, but uh, they're going to have to battle. Uh, as the three seed, obviously, there's a couple of teams in front of you here in the MPSF, and if you want to make it uh, to the NCAA, the what do they call it? Is it the six teams now that make the NCAA tournament or whatever it is in men's volleyball? You're going to have to win this uh, entire tournament, the MPSF tournament this weekend. So uh, hopefully the good juju can travel with the BYU men's volleyball program uh, to LA this coming weekend. All right. There you go. That's what I got for you guys. So hopefully it's enough updates for you guys to satiate your appetites. Uh, I'll have more, I'm sure, to pass along to you guys uh, literally in the coming hours, uh, minutes, it feels like at times, and even the coming days as well. But it is my sincere hope that BYU will get a higher done and be able to react to Chris Burgess being hired, Barrett Peary being hired. Who knows? who they ultimately land on, but uh, I think I've made it very clear where I prefer uh, that job go to, but we'll see how it ultimately all transpires as we continue uh, tracking it all right here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. Once again, a big thank you to all of you for your support of the podcast. Thank you for making your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers as well. And until tomorrow, my friends, this has been, once again, the Locked On Cougars podcast.